What's up, Taurus? TT here with your channel message. If y'all are new, welcome to our love nest with Talk Tequila. If you're returning, welcome back, you guys. Today's channel message is pretty specific. This is going to resonate for those of you that are dealing with the pros and cons or you're weighing the pros and cons around love okay but before we jump into love let's get into spirit's transformation because there's a lot of positive changes going on around you right now there's a lot of positive changes coming coming your way and a part of these positive changes that are coming your way you may not um feel like there's anything that you can do about it if something feels like it's inevitable but it's also necessary at the same time something also feels very tempting so you may feel tempted to be seduced by your own um, desires you may feel tempted to kind of like oh my god this path is so hard I just really want a person or I just really want love or I just really want to feel something so maybe you are you know weighing the pros and the cons leaving home pushing the envelope right let me see what I can get away with let me see if I can get off this path just for a little bit maybe I might be able to entertain a person in the meantime or entertain a situation in the meantime whatever it is for you um Taurus spirit wants you to like when you think about love right like when you genuinely think about love and what it is on a general general level we're not even talking just about romantic only I'm talking about um love from all areas of life the influence of your father relationship what does that love relationship look like when you think back to what that relationship was like what are the pros and cons about that right when you think back to the relationship you had with your mother the love relationship you had with your mother what was that what was the pros and cons the drawbacks that you have learned thus far when it comes to that type of relationship and 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 furthermore when it comes to your friendships and your siblings and other influential roles thus far on your journey whatever that relationship has looked like thus far all right we want you to ask yourself or spirit wants you to ask yourself how was love sexualized how was love um when it came to like, was the conversation really open? Did your parents have an open platform with you when it comes to your sexuality? You know, were they really supportive of you when it came to how you wanted to explore that realm? Are you exploring, you know, intimacies, um, erotic intimacy and sexuality with relationships and partners only from a romantic standpoint? Has anyone been willing or cared enough to have those type of conversations with you to kind of help you navigate, you know, what that is that you're feeling? What is it called? And how do you create from it? How do you interact with that type of, you know, sensation or cultivation because really it's a cultivation, right? All that that you feel on the inside is energy, okay? Many people have different names for it, but it's definitely like a beacon of light, right? A manifestation. It's also a way to connect in the future. It's a creation energy. Um, so yeah, Spirit wants you to kind of take time to ask yourself, like, like don't get me wrong, Sex in itself is a pivotal aspect when it comes to relationships and romanticism, right? How intimate you can get with each other physically and what realms you explore together is it's a pivotal part of intimacy. It's a pivotal part of sexuality and all that great jazz. But before you look into that, Spirit is asking you to go back, all right? Go all the way back before time. All right, before cultures, before social statuses, before all these things were produced, think back to like Mother Nature and raw creator energy, what that was, right? I know it's about to sound real explicit, but you know, trees pretty much nut on us all day long. And we've gotten to a point where we're kind of allergic and to to it we're allergic to <laughs> we're allergic to the the semen that is secreted <laughs> during pollen season 
like we like oh my god pollen season it's everywhere oh it's like mantic it's like i feel like this is gonna hold some type of clarification or confirmation for somebody i have no idea um because you're you're interacting with your universe yeah that's what it's about like you're interacting with your universe Taurus, and your universe is also your universe, especially you know predominantly my channel is made up of feminine energy so your universe is also your universe and how you interact with the trees and your environment also expresses a level of intimacy right it also reflects back to you the changes that are going on around you in the world and how in tune you are with that energy um on a sensitive level right it's gonna come from your root chakra it's gonna it's gonna rise up it's gonna go up <laughs> to the father to the son from the darkness child i don't know so let's see Spirit, why is this your message what is this about for taurus because spirit is saying like there's some allergens okay like you have to you have to take a lot of people have to take foreign products now just to be able to tolerate going outside because that's how much sexuality and that intimate intimacy is uh resisted there's a level of resistance something's plastic um embracing family zeta arrogance yeah saving humanity self discipline you know, I am, this is very interesting that it's coming out, embracing family, saving humanity, and arrogance. All right, so masculine energy is showing up here, willing, being willing to, to see, you know, embrace the conversation around the gray area. All right, self-discipline. So the gray area when it comes to embracing family is, we all know what's the gray area it's like third party situations right when you're dating someone they have family or extended family they become a part of your family another great area when it comes to family and relationships is also polygamy right the idea of procreating um and feeling like you know that's a form of arrogancy no one wants to talk about it that's another reflection of not wanting to humanity not wanting to talk about the topics that are real the different perspectives that are currently existing within us um their conversations their topics that's pretty much all spirit is saying about it um look at that being the mentors in reverse so those that have come before you may not have want may not want to have this conversation. They may want not may not want to talk about um how it affected you in your love life and your relations relationships. Some of you you have upbringings of watching your father or your mother lack the self discipline to really be there and show up for the family not just provide for the family and do 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 but also to teach them how to be more disciplined and not just nut all over the place you know <laughs> sometimes you gotta teach people how to aim but they ain't really aiming right they aiming in the wrong places but then once the tree has been once the once once the insemination has happened then are we talking about what happens after the fact with this embracing family? What happens once the child is already here? What happens once the decision is already made? How do we move the conversation forward rather than being stuck on it and repeating like a like a broken record the same issue? Oh, that person's just arrogant. This is one of their consequences. Do 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 do. do. You know, seventy seven is also a divine uh, a master teacher number. Well, anything amplified by the itself is a form of mastery, right? But we have being the mentors, and that's in reverse. So I feel like this is these are conversations and topics that want to be had. These are the gray areas that want to have light shed on it. Um, but then there has to be people willing to put their pride aside to have these types of conversations that humanity wants to talk about humanity wants to know what's right and what's wrong humanity wants to know 
you know, who said it was right and it was wrong and where did that come from? So it, it creates a debate. These gray areas creates legitimate debates that want to be discussed. Um, however, there's some type of distraction that's like the opportunities to have these type of discussions and really get to the the root of things. There's something distracting the desire to venture down these roads or these conversations or experiences. It's like, oh, I don't want to go down there. Or I don't want to go down that road. I've seen that happen to someone else. I feel like what spirit is saying, humanity has gotten to the point where we are more willing to experience life and its gray areas and receive the enlightenment from watching it on TV, right? Or from hearing, watching it happen to someone else that we look at one another from the standpoint of what not to do rather than experiencing it ourselves in any capacity because um, our pride of not wanting to fail um, or not wanting to step out of the light or fall from grace. There is some type of stigma. Um, I feel like it's a stigma. That's the word I'm hearing that you only fall for, from grace or you only fall out of grace when you disobey or you're not obedient. Um, self-discipline, when you can't control yourself, that's the only time that you are going to learn a hard lesson. And the best mentors or the best guides on earth have fallen from grace at some point on their journey and they were redeemed or they were brought back in a very in an even more powerful way so shying away from death and transformation is equivalent to to denying yourself your own redemption um your own ascension if you think about a lot of great leaders i'm not saying that they're perfect but what i am saying is In a lot of ways, they weren't embraced by their family members. Um, they didn't. W- people didn't want to talk about the things that they wanted to talk about. And for some of them, they had no one else to rely off of but themselves in order to see something into fruition. They had to fall from grace and commit to something, even when the rest of the world around them was working against them. Um, I'm not telling you that this is spirit saying you need to be some type of martyr or anything like that. But what I am saying is that after you have descended in some capacity, no matter if it's in love, no matter if it's with your family or you feel like you failed at a mistake or an experience that that doesn't feel so good. Um, it's never too late. It's never a mistake. It's always an opportunity to redeem yourself. There's always an opportunity, um, to take that experience and to repurpose it. Uh, this is giving me recycle energy as well, because you have forgiveness and gratitude in reverse. And the trick here is you forgiving yourself, really light of awareness, once you forgive yourself, you'll feel more empowered to ascend. You will be kind of open, be more open to interacting. I feel like relationship technology. I told you spiritual technology. Yeah, I feel like this is the way. Beyond wisdom. I feel like this is the way spirituality is being worked into technology right when each and every single person shares their own personal story on on these platforms and they are sharing their songs and their creativity you are um the founders you're the builders of a new world right spiritual technology also makes me think of you know your sanctuary, your spiritual practices, your relationship that you once had by going to a physical church being something that you take everywhere with you, right? Putting that spirit back inside of your your body, your vehicle, and walking with it. Um, 
seeing beyond the veil in more than one way. I feel like this is kind of what spirit is saying here. But in order for this to really anchor inside of you, in order for this transform transformation to really take root and for you to digest it and repurpose it or give it back out, spit it back out or whatever, you have to kind of allow the energy in. And I feel like with being a mentor in reverse, there's some doubt here. Do I have what it takes to be of service in this way? Do I have what it takes to work on those habits within myself in order to grow or, or advance? Yeah, this is like your spiritual vessel, your, your body being prepared for something. There's so much self-discipline here, though. And you kind of learning how to go with the discomforts of it. Many of you guys, this feels like, you know, you're transforming at a rapid rate. So you may be getting like a lot of lessons after a lot of lessons. You may embrace family at one moment and then you find out that they were working behind your back and doing different things. Um, you may find yourself at times getting mad. You're always forgiving people. You're in a constant state of feeling like you're the protagonist, but really they are. Um, there's a lot of pent up sexual frustration and shit like that also going in, which brings me to sex, right? And education, sex education. Because I feel like some of you may have Capricorn in your chart. Um, that may be a tantric sex may be a significant release for you. Um, maybe you, you don't feel like that's something you should do, you know. When in doubt, bust a nut. <laughs> when you're angry. <laughs> frick it, frick it, frick it. <laughs> Luigi. <laughs> I'm done. Okay. But it but in order to in order to move beyond the constructs of this the discomfort around these types of topics and conversations, you gotta you gotta go way back to mother nature and those times to really understand to understand the present moment you got to understand where you've been and you got to know where you're headed and that's kind of what unlocks for you the self-disciplines that are required from you right now to facilitate and prepare you for where you're trying to go you know and not just keeping you stuck in the state of manifesting it and dreaming about it and focusing on it you know, this is like moving you on. Scurry along there, Taurus. <laughs> Spirit, what do you want to talk about when it comes to um, self-discipline? Temperance in reverse. I can't leave him alone. But the dope boys turn me on. Yes, some of you guys, it's hard to resist someone that's pursuing you. The Knight of Wands, they take action. They're assertive. That may be very sex, sexy, attractive. If you're a masculine energy, you may like when a, when a woman or, or same sex, take it how it resonates. They see what they like. They go after it. They're ambitious. You know, they may be a little reckless at times. And it's just like, damn, bring that shit over here. You know, and it may be very difficult to constantly keep saying, no, thank you. No, thank you. Um, you know, and, and and at times with the three of swords, it feels good. Make me feel good. Do you know that's why that scene in that movie when like people when you're when you're in pain, right? When you're going through pain, you ever notice that whether you're at a wedding or a funeral, there's always someone that wants to have sex during those moments because you feel so low, you just need to feel something hard or close or warm you just need to feel touched for a moment just so you can kind of like process the grief or the emotions and from other people's perspective it may feel like oh you're not supposed to do that that's that's sick that's not healthy but let me explain something to you <laughs> this energy what I see here is you know, whether you're actually sleeping with another person or not, you may need to get that rage out of you, okay? You may need to to masturbate, to get that irritation up off of you, okay? 
you could transmute that experience yourself. You don't necessarily have to have a partner and then you got yourself a soul tie and all that other great sh- shit. But when the when there's something that needs to be tempered with inside of you and you're trying to get over another person, before you get to the point where you're physically expressing this pain by getting up under another person and trying to move on so quickly, maybe try masturbating first and processing the emotions on the inside, get the anger out, you know, tantrically express that self, that energy, so you can manifest from a more balanced standpoint. Because I feel like what's happening here is... Someone thinks they have you figured out or these energies that may think that they have you figured out. They're like, I'm going to cool it. And then when that person breaks their heart, I'm going to come in and I'm going to I'm going to put it down. You know what I'm saying? When when Taurus is trying to get over me and they see that there's nothing else good out there, they're going to they may be able to resist me now. But I'm going to get my moment where. They're, they're going to see the grass is never greener on the other side. And then that energy comes in. And because you're so exhausted and irritated by what's not manifesting physically for you, after you clear your space and you clear your energy to be able to receive something, um, you may say, fuck it. This is the best that I could do. Your optimism is fucked with. And that's because... Um, energetically and emotionally you're depriving yourself of a of a natural process that wants to be processed right you don't have to go and jump into another person dms or get with another person but you do need to dance that out of you you do need to sexually transmute that out of those chakras um so you can feel like you're touching earth you may need to lay on the ground like sometimes you know you lay on the ground and you stroke the the dirt. I don't know. Get in some mud and, and just feel. This is that energy of I just need I just need to be touched. I need to be touched. Okay. It's giving black snake moan a little bit. Slightly. <clears throat> or that part. I don't know if it was in color purple where she was like make me feel good and she was oh no that was um monster's ball yeah with holly berry when she was like just made me feel good sometimes that raw creation creative kundalini energy can make you feel real instinctual and make you feel real primal And in that state, you may just like want to just ravage whatever's closest thing next to you. And I feel like um, these Knight of Wands energies, of course, they're going to come in. Of course, the bees are going to come to the honey. You get what I'm saying? When the when the plants and the flowers start secreting that pheromone. The bees gonna come extract the nectar because they want to reproduce. It's instinctual. It's never personal. But if you try to imagine trying to restrict the nectar from coming out of a plant, you know, imagine that. Universally, that don't even that don't even that don't even go well together. Justice in reverse. Temperance in reverse. Like, this is going against universal laws of how you process pain. You know, when a tree is going through pain, what does it do? Does it stop itself from crying? No, it cries through it. It works through it. And it's not always looking like you, looking like you just going to go have someone to talk to. Sometimes you got to get tangible with all this red here. You want to feel, I need to feel it again. You may need to go run. You may need to hit the gym. You may need to swim. I don't know. You may need to feel something on your body. Play in the dirt. Run outside in the water. But it's something about getting that. uh, Letting it, you know, not letting it sit too long inside of you without it being expressed. Because it can be a detriment to yourself, you know. It can make you very boastful. It can make you 
arrogant, mean, um, can make you very impatient. Uh, it can make you mechanical. It can make you feel like you a know it all. It can make you feel it has a lot of side effects, you know. Has like I said, trees and plants at a certain time of year, they nutting all day, nonstop for fun. It's a it's a glorious time of year. <laughs> so emotions are irritable whether you're masculine or feminine I feel like this is a instinctual thing and it's a part of nature that you know you get tired of just fantasizing about it you get tired of you know you you eventually you get to a point where you of just being optimistic about it. you get to a point where you want to turn the key to that to that house you want to turn the key to that you want to turn that person on you ready to get shit popping Okay, <laughs> that's what I'm seeing here. Spirit, show me arrogance. The star in reverse. Yeah, this is being very boastful. I could do it all by myself. Not accepting guidance from anyone. Um, not really caring to accept guidance from anyone. Just wanting, not really wanting to earn it, and just feeling like I could just take it. It's mine. So be careful with this energy, or especially with this primal energy, because I feel like that's when we can be, we can really tap into that. You know, that. Um, Where we're not in alignment with purpose anymore, but we are doing something on purpose, whether we are aware of it or not, it's, you start to make it your duty, your responsibility to procreate your duty, your responsibility to make people act differently, make people believe differently. So you can control the environment and make it look a certain type of way for yourself so you can feel comfortable expressing your sexuality this is well if everybody get their act together and everyone starts acting in accordance to my belief systems then my universe reflects what I want to see and I get to make I get to let myself out I get to let my hair down I get to let you know I'm waiting I'm waiting I'm waiting to let this part of myself out well you're restricting yourself um and it's because you you believe like you are God's gift to mankind your perspective around love sexuality sensuality and how to care for someone is contingent on yeah the page of wands this is what's gonna make you be enthused I gotta have someone yeah that's mechanical spirituality Hmm. It's contingent on something. It's contingent. What is it contingent on? Because you feel like you're doing something for humanity. You're saving humanity from themselves. They do not know what they, they're doing. Five of Pentacles. Yeah. And when they get their act together, then they can come out of the cold. You know, when when someone makes you mad and you put them in a predicament, you want to see them, you kind of feel like they need to suffer a little bit. That can put you in an arrogant state when maybe all you needed to do was get you some sex or have some fucking take the load off. This is. Hold on now. And only you will know your intention. So if you know that you're not doing this. Um, or you're not struggling with abstinence and the purpose behind it and allowing those self-disciplines to be the, the willed or the commandments that you infringe on the rest of the world because your belief systems have, you know, reared you to believe this way and you're imposing that on humanity as the holy fucking grail. And then trying to take that distorted version of love and carry it over into spirituality. And 
pretty much infiltrated to get use spirituality as a as a modality to change people into or revert them into a perspective that you have which is arrogance and this isn't gender specific this is intentions this is the justice in reverse this is temperance in reverse seeing something that you want and placing yourself as the the goal or the achievement can be a version of a sleep uh, a silent spell cast it o- casting a silent spell over humanity maybe this was taught maybe this was passed down maybe this was something that was familiar but you know how do you how do you make a player into um a loyal person how do you turn a a hoe into a housewife how do you change people or someone that's bisexual into straight or someone that's you know um gay straight like these are all these different modalities as a i'm telling you this because i love you i'm telling you this because i'm trying to save you from where the world is going to say to you about you and do about you this is like i'm trying to save you from yourself which is not really a mentor it's more or less like a dictator you're dictating or someone is dictating and if you know this is not you but spirit is saying for those of you that are struggling with understanding pure love and where it really comes from you never really have to look too far because nature is going to teach you what love is no matter what you read in books no matter what the patriarchal system says or masculinity you cannot possess that creator energy. You just can't possess it. You can try to create levees. You can create channels. But it's always in abundance. It was never lacking anything. We changed forms more over time. Um, I heard the Moors. Okay, so change form over time. So, for example, in abundance is raw creator energy, right? It's instinctual sexual energy. There's never anything lacking. The only thing humanity has done is taken something that's, that was in abundance okay so what i was saying before i was really interrupted um yeah humanity is taking what was um made houses out of it build buildings with it um repurposed the abundance of the minerals the every element that's ever been discovered and that's still being discovered has has been able to be transmuted and changed and transformed from one form into another and and continuating that same type of process. Um, I feel like this is also you being able to remain like in awe and in wonder and go down every opportunity and door that's brought towards you. There is a there is a method to this energy you know what i'm saying with spiritual technology there's a method to it the more optimistic you are the more doors open the more um you are able to stay in this abundant frequency you're going to attract people that are lusting after you and you're going to attract people that genuinely care about you it's going to be up to you to be able to discern the difference okay and not be distracted by or tricked by the lust factor okay or the erotic energy it feels like you're developing a keen a keen eye for something to be able to see uh when someone is like oh my god i'm so in love with you there to be able to discern infatuation from real love 
that's how I feel. Yeah, Ten of Cups in reverse. Knowing when it's okay to reject something or somebody. I don't get the, I get this energy that on this experiment, <laughs> this feels like an experiment. I feel like you are, have been experimenting in love for a long time. That's what it feels like. Trial and error. Parallel. <sighs> There's a thin line between love and hate. Cause I feel like with parallel energies here, that infatuation lust of the lovers energy there's two sides to the lovers you know um there's two sides and being able to see through the illusion just because someone is fighting for you doesn't mean that 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 they care about you long term where they're able to stick it out through the good and the bad um or you know were they able to go through all the experience and still love you and appreciate you? Sometimes, you know, Knight of Wands energy can get bored very quickly. Queen of Wands energy, you may have to constantly stay in this seductive energy in order to get them to be attracted to you or want to come towards you. That is going to, that's going to play out. That's going to be, that's going to get old real fast. Yeah, King and Queen of Wands. Because y'all can only experience this excitement and thrill through like lust and factuation. Um, but it'll leave you both suspicious of each other. I feel like you've already been through that. Like you don't want to have to be suspicious of your partner. You don't want to have to be suspicious of any fucking body around you. That's what I feel like here. Spirit, what's the spiritual technology about? Ooh, strength in reverse. Well of fortune. This is a lot of reverses. Anytime you try to be so specific about what you want in love, you're not in a state of flow. Okay, so we have uh, fluidity. Yeah. Anytime you're trying to speed something up, you're out of alignment. That's the spiritual technology. If I do this, I'm guaranteed this. If I put in this amount of spiritual work on myself, I am old. I'm entitled to have a love like this. Trying to be um, with the changes here. Trying to change it to go in your way. Versus... Look at that speed of polarity in reverse. So in the past, how has that worked out for you? Trying to get anything quickly never really got you what you wanted anyway. So what what's the point of trying to force it go against the the natural state of flow? Because the wheel of fortune in reverse is pretty much saying. Not wanting to go through the experience. That's what I'm picking up off of this energy. Like, I don't want to go through the struggle. I don't want to go through the experience in order to acquire this type of love. I rather just manifest it, you know? If I manifest it and dwell on it and envision it long enough, I'm going to eventually get that person because that's the law of attraction. But the type of love that you want, the only thing you're attracting in that energy is other lustful people. When it comes to spiritual technology, this is earned. You went through the lesson, you went through the experience, you learned how to t how to t how to have self-discipline, self-restraint, self-control, the the power of yourself that you can't control no one else but yourself. Teaches you everything that you need to know to remain flexible with what comes towards you. But this is saying that humanity has had a tendency of they got their head in the fucking clouds. The majority believes that they can just manifest their their way and shape shift utilizing the manifestation tools and wisdom 
of other masters that was left left you know historically and just acquire what they want but they're getting a superficial plastic Techn technological version of that love it's not really real love and real care it's um just as just as quickly as you got it you make you may have it for 10 20 years you can give it everything that you that it ever wanted you can create family so seeds with these people but eventually They're going to feel like they didn't go through nothing with you. They're going to feel like you fixed them or you programmed them. There's a lot of energy around programming people through technology to agree to this type of expression of love. I manifested this. I used the law of attraction. I got the perfect one that I want. High value this, high value that. Um, this person is going to be loyal to me. It's through a space of arrogance. The connections don't really love each other. It's for the ambition. The ambitions of a rider. Yeah. Nine of cups in reverse. It's not going to be real, a real soulmate. A real love connection. It's going to be infatuation. And then y'all going to become suspicious of each other. And it's going to never fulfill the connection. Spirit, so clarify beyond wisdom. Oh, shit. This feels like stranger things. The This is like the other side of... Like what lies beneath the surface. This is the realm that no one really talks about. Yeah, we we, we can pick up on the energy of what manifests after all of this is done. But spirit is really saying, no, what y'all don't see is underneath the surface. Before you talk about the manifestation that's about to come in or the manifestation that's happening. These are the intentions underneath underneath the the veil these are the intentions behind the scenes and they're going to make you aware of it too they tell you to your face we have six six and seven they're not even lying about it the crazy part about it is they're telling you to your face exactly what it is that they're doing to you and you still can't see it <laughs> and they're laughing about it like this shit is hilarious I'm going to show you because there's that desire where pff, at least that person is telling the truth. There's so many different like spiritual algorithms going on at once. If I, if I make you feel like I was never holding on to you, if I make you feel like um, I never chose you then it's supposed to by design keep you desiring me it's supposed to by design keep you wanting me because that's the realm that i i've manifested with that's the intentions that i gave so if i make you feel like you're not the most important person in my life or i make you feel like i'm so unaccessible psychologically you see the the flip side of that I'm worth so much. I need to do, I need to chase you. I need to give you more of my time. I need to, you know, figure out how I can earn this because I want to earn it. Now that's being duped. And then they tell you straight up to your face that it could never work. They'll tell you in so many subliminal ways it could never work because you didn't you didn't catch on at the fact that I didn't invest in you. You were investing in me and because I didn't invest in you first, then I was able to ride the gray area. You were willing to accept me just as I am. So from you have to spirit is saying you have to uh, find time. 
if you if you want to understand something, you got to understand your opponent. And until you have allowed yourself to study and understand your opponent, you're only playing chess. You're only playing checkers, not chess. You can say that you don't want to play the game all you want and you don't want to be in the manipulation and all the other stuff. The fact that you're manifesting or you're calling in true love, you are already participating in Jumanji. You rolled the dice. You roll the dice. You're engaging with energy. <laughs> I'm, I'm just... You keep walking away like I feel defeated because I couldn't get that person to care and love for me. So I'm just going to go back to something familiar. No, 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 no. Silly rabbit. Tricks are for kids. <laughs> you don't go back. That's not how you get. That's not how you do that. Eight of cups emotionally detached because you didn't get what you want. It's over. It's too much. It's too much to think about. I just want to move on. I'm going to find me something better. This character is still running rampant. Because they're still here to teach you something. I'm telling you, they're still here to help you master the Queen of Swords. They're still your mentor or your teacher. Five, three, four, five. Yeah, you got to change something. Ooh, hopeless romantic type of energy. Someone in your life is a is a character archetype, and they're meant to teach you about giving to someone off false pretenses. They're meant to teach you about falling in love with the idea of love and being a hopeless romantic being head up falling head over heels for infatuation lust over love y'all may be teaching each, each other this in a specific way um and i haven't even barely touched the surface from a feminine perspective here's the truth okay when a person cares about you scratch seeing your worth when a person cares about you genuinely they do not they will not play with you they will take their time they will be they will not rush anything they will not chase you how you're going to know this person and, I, and i'm saying this in those ways because the king of swords will not chase you either but there's a fine line between not chasing someone and not having any intentions for them at all. What I see here is there's this decision not to go back to anything karmic from the past, but It's based, Spirit clarify this, because I feel like that's, yeah. <laughs> it's like every single time you make that decision or you put in that spiritual intention, there goes that narcissist coming right back because your guards are down. Like, I refuse to go back to anything karmic. Um... Someone waits until you get worn out by other people and then they show up in your life. There's an energy that's always showing up after you have kind of been ran down by a bitch twice, okay? Or you're just energetically exhausted and drained from the whole entire experience that you have spiritually. Um, there's this inability to make a choice. You need to make a choice. You need to make a choice. What's the choice that Taurus needs to make? Oh, if you're ready to learn this lesson or not. You need to make a choice if you're ready to learn this lesson or not. And the people that you're meant to learn this lesson with 
that you're meant to be collab this could be soul tribe energy this is like bring it on death card judgment bring it on i'm ready for that conversation i'm ready to be you know those people lights out you're not going to be able to stop these energies from coming at you taurus <laughs> For whoever needs to hear that, you're not going to be able to stop the the fact of the the desire to want to stop these energies from coming at you is control in itself. You're not going to be able to stop the weapons from forming. The only thing God promised you is that it wouldn't prosper. You're not going to be able to stop people from knocking on your door and har and bothering you. You can hide in a shed. You can go underground. But the energy is spiritual. <laughs> the energy is spiritual. You're not going to be able to stop it from doing any, from coming towards you. The side that you're supposed to be on is teaching yourself how to prepare or how to stay ready so you don't have to get ready. You're supposed to be learning other gifts are wants to be accessed within you so this could be the gift of light language the gift of talking in tongue the gift of prayer the gift of candle magic the gift of something else that wants this entire situation to wield out of you but you got to go through the fire you can't go around it and you can't go under it yeah this is like I can't win for losing. Because I get this image of like, I don't know if this is you, Taurus, or other people, of just, I'm just going to cut people off and um, fuck it. If you can't beat them, join it type of energy. There's a lot of contemplating. And I feel like it's not really your thoughts, Taurus. It's just the vibration. So you're going to have to look at things from a positive outlook, from a, a positive, optimistic standpoint in order for you to kind of set yourself free from feeling like you are a victim. Alice in Wonder said, Wonderland, she said, before bed, she thinks of a million ways to do something. That's kind of the end of the spectrum that they want you on. A mil um, just a million and one. It opens your mind instead of keeps it keeping it closed. When you're able to do that. Where you're just like, oh wow, I can I can envision a million and one solutions to my problem. Oh wow, I can envision a million and one, you know, possibilities, and all of them are, all of them have doors that have doors that unlock more doors. And when you're in that frequency, there's so much to manifest from. There's so much to procreate with. There's so much abundance. Even if you never receive the recognition, you're going to be at peace. Mm -hmm. And this is for you because not everyone here. It's not your duty or obligation to tell everybody else what you know, Taurus, just because um, you know about it. So spirit is saying drop that burden as well. You don't have to take everybody with you. Whether that's family, friends, or X, Y, and Z. You earned it just, just as much as you earned it. They're capable of earning it. And you have to allow them to become curious. Just like you had to become curious to access this real um, deep layer. Because there, it's intended to make people ask the question like, oh, snap, well, how did you do that? You know, it's meant to make them become curious and go down their own rabbit hole. So Spirit is kind of saying like, stop blocking the hole, really. Yeah, pretty much stop blocking the hole supposed to be always supposed to be one in the hole or something about one in the hole 
You could be playing pool or you like to play pool. There's a concept. There's some type of game that you like to play. If you could see this from that same viewpoint, you maybe understand what I'm able to understand what I'm saying. Like I could see it, but I mean, even if I said it, it'll just be confirmation because not everyone's going to get it anyway. We have a uh, grizzly bear power. I am indestructible. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I honor my intuition and go where it leads. Love and gentleness are my real strength. I never give up. I will succeed. <laughs> this is like, come through, spirit. Supernatural. You are the ancient wise sage. You can shape shift at will. Mastery is your destiny. Rise with dignity. Good luck. You are a bright energy. Let worry go and be happy here now. Feel good about being a loving and colorful you. You bless the world with color and good luck. I told you. I'm telling you. I know I sound like a broken record, but yo, I get so excited with these readings. Taurus, I love you guys. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.